Hi, welcome back to Carbohydrates and Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is one of the very important strategies that cells have of building more complicated carbohydrates. So what's the most simple, what's the simplest form of carbohydrates? Well, that's what we often call simple sugars or monosaccharides, okay? If I put two monosaccharides together and join them covalently, then I have a disaccharide. If I take that disaccharide and condense it with another monosaccharide, it becomes a trisaccharide, and so on and so forth. And in some cases, there may be proteins that you might want to put a pentasaccharide on, maybe a hexasaccharide. Maybe you'd like an even longer chain of carbohydrates, and that would be some kind of polymer. And we talked about this in, the, in another video. If you are an insect, it may be desirable to put many, many N-acetylglucosamine molecules together to make chitin, and that's a polymer, and so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do is look at a, a general strategy that, that cells use to condense two monosaccharides to make a disaccharide. Now over here on the left side of the screen, I have a generic monosaccharide, okay? And I'm just drawing it right now with one substituent label, that's this OH group. You're to assume that every other one of these four carbons has something on it, but I'm just drawing this very generically to denote that this is just, a, just some monosaccharide. It could be glucose, it could be something else, but I'm just, just simply drawing this generically, okay? Just so you're aware of that. All right, so the first step in, in doing this is we are going to phosphorylate this oxygen right here, we're gonna phosphorylate it. And whenever we do a phosphorylation reaction, that means we're transferring a phosphate from ATP onto some atom of a molecule. In general, what we're doing is we're transferring a phosphate onto this oxygen right here. You could effectively think of it as we're replacing the hydrogen on it with a phosphate. And that phosphate comes from the, from the ATP molecule as shown here in the reaction. That's catalyzed by a kinase. That's the kind of enzyme that does this. So a kinase is literally going to phosphorylate this monosaccharide at this position right here. And so we get a phosphorylated monosaccharide. And in, in, in the process of transferring the phosphate from ATP, we get adenosine diphosphate. That's reasonable. We expect that. All right. This is where the strategy gets a little more convoluted and complicated. Okay. And we'll, we're going to do this reaction right here, and then we're going to discuss why it does this in a few minutes. What's going to happen is the next step in um, preparing a linkage between two carbohydrates is we want to do something called uridylylation. Okay, that's a really complicated word. Let me write it. Oops, it is uridylylation. What does uridylylation mean? It means we are transferring a molecule of UMP, which is uridine monophosphate. We're transferring one molecule of UMP onto some other molecule. So this is what I would like to show you. So this part of this substrate right here, I'm gonna go ahead and circle this. I'm gonna circle that in pink, all right? What we're going to transfer is a UMP onto that. Where do you think the UMP is going to come from? Well, it has to come from a UMP donor, so maybe a likely candidate could be UTP, or uridine triphosphate. Some, it's kind of an analog of ATP, except adenine is replaced with uracil. So this is UTP. The part of the UTP that's going to be transferred is this over here. Let me go ahead and put this in. I'll put it in green. Actually, not green. Let me do pick a color. I'll just do um, dark blue. So this part is actually going to be transferred onto this pink part over here. And then all this stuff over here, I'm gonna put this in yellow, let me box it. This is going to be lost, and we actually see that over here. So let's go over the reaction very quickly. So I have this phosphorylated monosaccharide, right? It's going to be condensed with the phosphate right here of UTP. You're going to lose pyrophosphate, and you're going to get this molecule down here. And this type of reaction is called a uridylylation reaction because we're transferring a UMP. And the type of enzyme that catalyzes this is called a uridylyl transferase. Okay? So what do we get? Well, this part in pink is right over here. So let's look at it. That's this. 
right there, the part I circled in blue, the UMP moiety, is this over here. So we transferred a UMP onto our phosphorylated carbohydrate. When you do this on some molecule like this, a phosphorylated monosaccharide, and you perform a uridyl transferase reaction, what you ultimately get is a UDP monosaccharide. Why is it a UDP monosaccharide? Because we have a carbohydrate right here that's a monosaccharide, and effectively, all this over here is UDP. Okay, so a UDP monosaccharide. If this monosaccharide over here was glucose, you would call it UDP glucose. If it was galactose, you'd call it UDP galactose. If it was N-acetylglucosamine, it would be UDP N-acetylglucosamine. So you call it UDP and then name whatever monosaccharide is attached to it. This is what's referred to as an activated sugar. Why is it an activated sugar? Well, here's the reason why. The reason it's an activated sugar is because this whole UDP right here that I kind of have bracketed in orange is a fantastic leaving group, okay? So I have this UDP monosaccharide, which is very high in energy. It's very high in energy. So that means if I try to have another monosaccharide, say, or I want to have it attack this carbon right there, maybe, then this whole UDP can leave as a fantastic leaving group. It's very resonant stabilized, and it is the molecule UDP monosaccharide is very high in energy. So that whole thing is going to be a leaving group. And so that's what exactly what we're going to use it as. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another kind of enzyme, which is just simply called a transferase. They have specific names depending on the specific reaction. But I'm going to throw another monosaccharide in here. And so this hydroxyl can attack this carbon. And then all of this over here will be lost as a leaving group. And you see it coming off of the reaction right here. UDP. So UDP is my fantastic leaving group. And so ultimately, when this OH attacks this carbon, this is my product. The white carbohydrate that I started with is on top. And this pink carbohydrate with the oxygen is shown on the bottom. And what I have effectively created is I have created a bond between both of those monosaccharides. And because I condensed two monosaccharides, I now have what is referred to as a disaccharide. Okay, And that's very important. And this strategy is used a lot in carbohydrate syntheses. And in fact, it doesn't actually have to be you know, this carbon that attacks. In some cases, it could be carbon-4 that attacks and carbon-4 would actually be over here. So maybe you have an OH sticking off like that. It could be up or down. Maybe that's the one that attacks. It actually could be any of them. In some cases, it's, it's the hydroxyl up here. It could be this one. It could be any on positions two or three. The point is, is this is the strategy that's going to be used to synthesize um, uh, dimers and trimers and so forth up to polymers of sugars. Okay, this is what's going to be used. Okay. And this is the most common strategy that's used by the cell. So let's do a quick recap. We're going to phosphorylate a monosaccharide, making a monosaccharide phosphate like this. Then we're going to uridylylate it with a uridyl transferase, which just means attaching a UMP moiety onto the phosphate that's already there. So if we take a UMP and attach it to something that already has a phosphate, that effectively creates a UDP on here that's attached to a sugar or a monosaccharide. Thus, we call it a UDP monosaccharide. If this monosaccharide was glucose, it would be UDP glucose. If it was, we could even, we could even have um, fructose. If it was fructose, it would be a UDP fructose. Okay. Then we catalyze a transferase reaction where we transfer something else, like a monosaccharide, onto it. And UDP is an excellent leaving group, so it leaves, creating a disaccharide. Okay. You can use this strategy to make many, many different arrangements of monosaccharides. So let's suppose I have a protein. This is a kind of a strategic question. Let's say I have, can I draw this like this? Let's say I have a protein, just a protein like that. That's my protein. And let's say the protein is not functional in just the protein form. Let's suppose I'm going to draw this like this, just whatever. Let's say the protein has to have a chain 
of carbohydrates coming off of it, right? It has to have a chain of carbohydrates. I'll just make like four. So maybe it has to have a four sugar um, kind of group coming off of it. Well, what's essentially going to happen is this group right here, this carbohydrate group, is going to be synthesized independently. Okay? So first what will happen, most likely, is this will actually first, you'll start with the, you could start with the yellow one, and then it's going to next add on the blue one in a similar fashion to what we saw, you know, we saw it up here, right? And then it'll potentially add on the purple one. Then it could add on the next purple one. Then it's going to take this, let me actually do this, it's going to take this and it's going to put it with this protein and then most likely what there's going to be is there's going to be some amino acid in the protein. It's usually a serine or an asparagine and we'll talk about that in another video but it'll actually, it will link, it will actually, oops let me do that in green, it will actually link the carbohydrate isn't that meant to be green? Sorry, let me fix that. Anyways, it will essentially link the protein to that carbohydrate, and it'll the carbohydrate will be covalently bound to the protein. And you could actually call this a glycoprotein, right? If the carbohydrate chain was large enough, you could call it a proteoglycan. That's usually the term that's given to the same thing when the carbohydrate occupies most of it. Okay, when the protein is most of it, it's a glycoprotein. But this is the concept. You can synthesize small polymers or oligomers of uh, carbohydrates, and then you can covalently attach them to proteins. And that's how this is done. And a great example of a protein like this that we've discussed in a previous playlist in protein function are antibodies. Antibodies are not just proteins. They also have a carbohydrate moiety on them. Okay? So it's, it's not just one carbohydrate, it's several linked together. So you can actually have, make some kind of um, polymer or oligomer of carbohydrates, and then it will be covalently linked to the antibody. And that plays a role in some of its functions. All right. So again, this is the strategy used to synthesize uh, multi-subunit um, carbohydrates, so polymers and oligomers. And that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.